As the 19th century progressed, the stories of so-called talking boards captured the public's imagination. There was no standard Ouija as we know it today. These talking boards varied widely in their layout and style, but each had numbers, small words and letters arranged on a wooden plank. And these talking boards all promised users they could communicate with the great beyond. Much like today's Ouija boards, users would manipulate a planchette, and if a spirit were nearby, it might speak through the holder of the planchette by forming words or sentences. Many believe in the mystical, occult powers of the board. Skeptics, however, scoff that talking boards and today's Ouija boards are just a manipulation of our collective subconscious, or simply a form of automatic writing known as psychological ideomotor effect. Either way, users have long reported getting messages from the afterworld while using the talking boards and what we now know as the Ouija board. But the practice of using board and planchette to communicate with the paranormal actually has a lengthy history that stretches around the globe. In fact, evidence of the first automatic writing methods were found in China, dating back to 1100 AD. Known as Fuji, or planchette writing, the ancient art is said to have been used to contact the ancestors, the dearly departed family members whose memory and honor were kept alive by their living descendants. Some also believe that Fuji was used in an effort to reanimate the dead through the dark practice of necromancy. The talking board phenomenon in America really took off in the late 1800s, with its first widespread boom in popularity. The main driving force behind this was the rising tide of wealth in the US and in Europe. Some people had more free time and money and were able to explore their fascination with what may lie beyond the valley between life and death. Another key contributing factor to the rising popularity of talking boards was an undeniable reality. The median life expectancy at the time was roughly 55 years of age. This wealth and prosperity, coupled with tragic loss, made people look outside of traditional religion for a means to understand death and attempt to reconnect with their loved ones. And with the rise of this need to understand death, a movement we now call the Spiritualists gained some serious traction in the States and in Europe. The talking board was one of the main tools used by the Spiritualists. These spirit boards, as they were also called, allowed mediums to connect with the dearly and recently departed. There are many compelling stories of true life paranormal events from this time period. However, there's also the reality that many of these medians were simple grifters, con men, attempting to take money from the recently bereft. Over the next decade, a wide network of charlatans and tricksters sprung up throughout America. As more people used talking boards, more boards needed to be produced. Capitalists and spiritualists alike filed a number of patents and numerous boards were brought to market. But the quintessential talking board, the one that would eclipse all others, was created in 1891 by Charles Kinneret and businessman Elijah Bond. Together they brought a talking board into the world that quickly became the gold standard. They called it a Ouija board. Why Ouija? With that strange spelling, O-U-I-J-A. No one really knows. Some believe that it could have been named after a famous author of the period who went by the pseudonym Ouida, O-U-I-D-A. Perhaps it doesn't matter, because whatever the true origin of the name, the Ouija board became wildly popular. So much so, that over the course of just a few years it virtually replaced every other existing option. People simply began referring to any and all talking boards as Ouija boards. William Fold was a businessman and inventor from Baltimore, Maryland. By the end of his life, Fold had 33 patents, trademarks, or copyrights to his name. However, the thing he is most widely remembered for is the Ouija board. In fact, he's considered the father of the Ouija board. Now, how was that possible, since the Ouija board was created by Kinneret and Bond? After some backroom drama and a buyout, Fold took over their company, forced them out, and changed the name to the Ouija Novelty Company. Up until his death in 1927, William Fold ran the company and branded himself as the creator of the Ouija board. We'll never know how the Ouija board would have fared under Kinneret and Bond, but we do know that Fold and his company took the Ouija board from being a fad to something that would last forever. 
At one point in 1920, Fold claimed that the board had made him a million dollars in profit. Is that true? Fold was a notorious prankster, and his personality was closer to a carnival barker than the creator of a children's board game. But Fold's larger-than-life persona helped solidify him as the board's creator in the eyes of the public. I did not push that. Seriously? No, you guys no. push that over to the X like that? No. Not at all. Mm -mm. You guys doing something underneath the table? No. No. Because that looked like it moved all on its own. Thank you.